we study astrology and in this study of astrology we know about what is going to happen with a native there are two ways to look at it one you look that people have done karma and because of karma there is some results karma fall the result of karma that you have to go through in this life which is signified by many planets so of course you go through karma <clears throat> Now in this karma, there is Dhrida karma, Adhrida karma and Radhrida karma. Dhrida karma literally means fixed karma that you have to go through without any ifs and buts. It is there. Then Dhradhrida karma is those karma which you have to go through initially. But after the initial suffering, it can be changed if your behavior is good, if you perform remedies, etc. Or it can continue if your behavior is not good, you have not learned a lesson. And then there is Adhrida Karma which can be easily changed or which can be easily taken care of just by taking preventive measures, being careful, etc. Now, because we know of something that is going to happen through astrology, if the things are bad, it is very essential. It is natural that we will want to remedy. Now this remedy comes into like to understand remedy, you understand it as the karma bhog is already done. You have already gone through some results of karma. And because you have done the karma and now realize that it is a bad karma, you are doing penance for it. You are doing penance as a corrective measure. You are doing penance, seeking forgiveness from the God. This is the basics for spiritual remedies. Another is that you try to avoid the bad results by the best that you can do. By using the 20-30% free will that you have. And to do this, you go to the astrological remedies of Vastu, Murta, Matchmaking, etc. In this particular video, I am talking of spiritual remedy or penas, where you have understood that you have done some bad karma and you have also gone through a little bit of suffering. Already, either known or unknown, and now you are doing repentance for it. Or even if you have not gone through the karma because we have realized that we have done something, we are doing repentance for it, right? Corrective measures. Rather. In this, you know, this all this remedy is more or less a penance. If you believe astrology to be the science of karma, now see, because it is based on the Vedic Siddhanta, the philosophy, the doctrines eulogized in Vedas, elaborated in Puranas, Upanishads, Aranyak, etc., and the Astic Darshan, Astic philosophy of Hinduism. So if you believe in repentance that we have done some karma and we are repenting it doing corrective measures, it is the spiritual remedy that are the repentance. Other remedies such as wearing gemstones, etc. These are not repentive measures, right? These are not corrective measures. This is not repentance. This is not the, you know, this is, this is, this is not the corrective measure that you are taking into consideration. This works on some other level. Gemstones, etc., they work on a level of that there is something in your personality. There is a particular facet in your personality, but that particular facet is weak, subdued, hidden. And you want it to be more prominent, you want it to be powerful. To give that power, you use remedies like gemstone. Right? <clears throat> so, for this particular reason, gemstones, etc., are recommended for those planets who are good but are weak. On the other hand, spiritual remedies, penance related remedies, correction related remedies can be done for every planet. Here, every planet, every house, every Rashi, here the basic concept is that some quality may be lacking from our personality, some quality may be hidden, some quality may be subdued, or some result we may be getting because of a bad karma and we are repenting for it. Hence, doing spiritual penance. Now into this spiritual penance, 
you know, there are a different type of remedies that is there that you can do. Right. And specifically talking of spiritual remedies, worship, mantra chanting, visiting to temples is what I primarily recommend. Because it gives purification of soul, purification of thought and changes at multiple levels. Going by <clears throat> taking the way that Sanatan Dharma is scientific, it is only spiritual practices where it can be told that the power of mantra have changed something or purification of mind have changed something. It is where the energies are playing. Other than that's like, you know, throwing something in water, etc. These things somehow, you know, don't have that impact you can say, or their spiritual understanding or how they work is dubious. Whatever. So coming back to my point, <clears throat> regarding spirituality, regarding this penance, dharma related, not spirituality, dharma related, worship related, deity related, devotion related, remedies, I am pretty sure that popular gods we know about, right, Ram, Ram, Krishna, etc. Popular gods we know about, other than that, there can be remedies through Dashavatar, the ten incarnations of the great Lord Vishnu. There can be remedies through popular gods also and there can be remedies through Devi and Avatar of Devi, different forms of Devi also. In this particular setup, in this particular domain of spiritual remedies, worship etc. related remedies, deity, God related remedies, there is something known as Siddhidhya. Now you have to understand this particular thing. Vidya means knowledge. And in this perspective, you telling the divinity, telling the nature that I have understood my bad karma. Realized my bad karma. Now I am repenting it through worship or this spiritual practice, etc. And rather, and saying that, that whatever lessons that I have to learn by going through this karma, God, please be favorable to us and teach me that lesson through your worship, through your sadhana. Make me internally realize it. Right. While saving from the difficult karma. This is the approach of Siddha Vidya and see what happens in you know, mantras. When a mantra is given freely to people, it loses its power. Right. I generally say that the more a mantra is chanted, the more power it loses. The thing with respect to mantra is it have to be kept secret. Right. So whatever mantra you have got, that mantra you should not discuss with anyone. The power of mantra, the power of spiritual secret is in secrecy. That it is to be kept with yourself. Going by the approach of tantra, going by the traditional approach out of all of the deities, all of the mantras and everything that is there. Some are difficult to see. Siddhi means accomplishment rather. But Siddhi, you can say perfection here or, you know, getting the grace of God. So some Vidyas, some Gods, some deities are difficult to please. Some are like normal to please, little bit of difficulty, but can be easily done also. Devotion, dedication, etc. is needed. Whereas some is specifically mentioned as Siddh Vidya. Siddh Vidya means these gods, these deities are already in their active form, are already pleased. And these are those deities just by chanting their name, just by visiting their temple, one can realize the energy, one can get the impact of the energy. So Siddha Vidya should be taken as Jakrit Vidya, living form of energy, the most potent form of God, where with minimum effort, you get the maximum result. This is the purpose of Siddha Vidya. For a particular example, talking of 10 Mahavidyas, right? according to my research, according to my personal understanding, sun indicates Matangi. Moon indicates Kali, Mars indicates Chinnamasta, Mercury indicates Kamala, Jupiter indicates Bhuvaneshwari, Venus indicates Sodashi, Saturn indicates Bhagalamukhi, Rahu indicates Dhumavati and Ketu indicates Kali. 
now this list is different than what you will otherwise find but this is based on my research right and this is what i have seen working in the horoscope of spiritual aspirants great spiritual aspirants who have been in devoted service to a particular dt point one Secondarily, based on this particular list, I have recommended Mahavidya worship, etc. to needy people and they have got huge benefits in my experience also, hence sharing this with you. Secondarily, out of these Mahavidyas, Kali, Tara, Shodshi and Bhuvaneshwari are considered as Mahavidyas. Bhairavi, Chinnamasta and Dhumavati are considered as Vidyas and Bagala, Kamala and Matangi are considered as Siddhi Vidyas. Now what one understand by Siddhi Vidya? Bagala, Kamala and Matangi are Siddhi Vidya. See, Kamala is a higher form of Goddess Lakshmi. Bagala Mukhi, I think people, you people already know about. And Matangi is the daughter of Sage Matang. Now by Siddh Vidya, it is meant that anyone who like out of all of these Mahavidyas, Bagala Mukhi, Matangi and Kamala are quick reacting. Even those people who are not initiated in Tantra, they just by visiting the temple of Kamala, Matangi and Bagala can get her grace and even uninitiated people just by taking her name, just by remembering her or just by doing little bit of practices can get the blessings of these goddesses. This is how this should be understood, right? So you can say Kali Sadhana is very difficult. Kali worship only under the strict guidance of a guru, it can be done. It is difficult. One have to be very careful, etc. All of that is there. It is not the case that in Bhagalamakhi worship, you don't have to be very careful. But the point is because Bhagala is a Siddhi Vidya, anyone who goes to Bhagalamakhi with a sincere request, with a pure heart, Bhagalamakhi helps her. And because it is a Siddh Vidya, just by a little bit of penance, she comes to your rescue. The only thing that is needed is pure devotion and a clear pious approach, a clear pious request. And of course, because she is the ultimate goddess, she knows all the truth, even that you don't know. And she can get sense of all the vrattis and everything of a human, all the tendencies, etc. of a human. If if you go to her with a malign intention or a bad intention with the intention of harming someone else, she may also do the work, but the punishment will also be heavy. Right. So in this particular video, or rather in this series of video, I am talking of these Siddhi Vidyas other than this particular, these four, these three that I have mentioned. Right. Matangi, Kamala and Baglamukhi. Siddhi Vidyas connected to a particular Rashi, connected to a particular house that you can easily please. I will also tell you the pleasing method, how to please. Right. These are Siddh Vidya already, you know, already done Siddhi. So Siddhi is like, you know, there is a process of taking out clarified butter, churn the milk, take out the clarified butter. Siddh Vidya basically means some, sage, some sages, some people who wanted good of the humankind already churned the milk, made the clarified butter, kept it at a place so that anyone can come and have it for general welfare. So great people have done this for us. To actually benefit from Siddh Vidyas, the first thing that you will need is devotion towards those people who have done good to the world. Be thankful to them. And being thankful and grateful to those people who tell you about the Siddh Vidyas, who take you about, who take you to the Siddh Vidyas and who tell you further methods. Gratefulness is the first thing that is needed. Right? So that you become grateful to all the people. You don't have hatred, jealousy, lust, greed, anger, such bad emotions when it is out of your psyche. Then the Siddh Vidyas are like the clarified butter, which is already kept at some place. You just have to go there and eat it. Enjoy the result. The Siddh Vidya that I am talking of about today is Kubjika. Kubjika is connected to Scorpio. Scorpio Rashi, Kubjika is connected to 8th house. So see, worship of Kubjika is essential for everyone. There are the Siddh Vidya and worship of Siddh Vidya is essential for everyone. Because they indicate a facet of creation, a facet of human life that is there in everyone's horoscope. 
so everyone should be pleasing them all of them for a perfect life the perfect life that they can have perfect life as per their horoscope that everyone have a you know everyone should have a perfect life is the basic point right perfect life as per your horoscope you will have so you have to please all the siddhividyas but but most importantly those who have an afflicted eighth house bad planet in eighth house afflicted eighth lord malefic planets in scorpio afflicted scorpio rashi and those who are having problem because of this kumbhika siddhividya is specifically is specifically very useful for them so you say your 10th lord is going into scorpio you are facing problems in the matters of profession then kubjika is the churned out clarified better for you just go to kubjika take her name and your problems will be resolved is the basic point in this particular way this should be understood right so for scorpio and for the 8th house kubjika is this not talking of kubjika kubjika is also known as vakreshwari right kubja kubjika comes from the word kubja which basically means crooked so if you remember ramayan mantra is crooked right mantra is crooked or humped now in some spiritual redemptions of ramayan she is also considered and avatar incarnation of saraswati who gave the idea or rather advice because saraswati is the goddess of work speech so she instigated that work which took the incarnation to do the work for which the incarnation was meant for the rama incarnation right so anyone specifically female who have a humped back crooked back deformed body you say anyone with a deformed body crooked body humped body specifically female serving them doing things for their betterment helping them respecting them is a remedy which is very miraculous specifically old aged women suffering through physical defects taking care of them helping them is the prime remedy that pleases kubjika and helps your eighth house and scorpio malefic combinations it the in the eighth house malefic combinations happening in scorpio etc it comes as a great relief now the point is once navatman that is a form of a shiva was holding his wife vakrika before copulation and because of being held in this way by her husband she became shy and in this shyness she bent her body which earned her the name kubjika so see eighth house rather is also connected to being shy not being able to express yourself see it indicates a hole red scorpio rashi also indicates scorpion which lives in a hole so being shy going into your own you know domain keeping yourself confined to yourself not being able to express yourself introvert people etc are indicated by the 8000 scorpio right so this sinus is a trait of scorpio is a trait of eighth house right so by understanding kubjika you can also understand scorpio and the eighth house better not being able to express yourself to the fullest in the right sense right having problem in expressing yourself being misunderstood is a trait for scorpio and eighth house now here a corrective karma that you should do is never ever make anyone shy intentionally or unintentionally in anger in rage or just in revenge we generally try to talk those things about people which they are not comfortable in sharing just for the matters of insulting people this we generally do this makes them shy 
so consciously preventing making people shy is a great remedy for kubhika that pleases kubhika as scorpio 8th house for along with this kubhika the sect of kubhika was very popular around 12th century bc and she was prominently worshipped in kashmir so in kashmir there is chir bhavani temple and in jammu there is also vishnu devi so going to chir bhavani temple in kashmir and going to vishnu devi in jammu is a great remedy for your 8th house for scorpio and once you visit these places give a sincere clear hearted devotion to goddess pray to her she surely helps you and saves you from the misery related to the 8th house and scorpio not only this kubhika is a divine embodiment of earth see scorpio is a rashi of mars who is also taken as bhumi putra the son of mother goddess earth kubhika was born of earth and water and she she sits on lotus right so offering lotus flower to devi specifically offering lotus flower to vishnu devi is offering lotus flower to chir bhavani in kashmir offering lotus to goddess in your daily worship is a great remedy for 8th house is a great remedy for scorpio also if you because she is born of earth and water mixture of earth and water so if you do social work to save water cleaning of rivers etc or do your best on not to pollute water not to pollute earth not to throw trash here and there and all of this if you help in preservation of earth planting trees keeping water pure and help in things just cleaning of water etc or donate to those ngos who look after the caring of earth caring of plants which is deeply connected to earth and caring of water water bodies cleaning of ganga etc this is also a great remedy for 8th house and scorpio not only this it is believed it is believed in the tradition of kubhika that kubhika is the greatest embodiment of goddess she is very great and this earth is small but she as she is the great divine mother wants to come to this earth stay on this earth this is the prime purpose this is the prime meaning which i have been trying to express that's why i have chosen kubhika to be the first siddh vidya that i will be talking about so the concept of siddh vidya is that because god is ever merciful god is ever merciful so in her mercy she taught that my children when they will be distressed on this earth she will they will be calling me and i should be on earth present on earth to listen to them to give them whatever they want with this desire of helping her children she the huge goddess supreme goddess enters the small earth and when a tall person have to enter a small hut they will have to bend down so she bent down to enter on this earth come on this earth made her form small right to help people to help her devotees to help those who reach out to her and because she have done this she is called kubhika or the hump backed one it's because because she is so merciful because she is so passionate she have done that and when you so mercy to someone, when someone should rightly be punished from you but you save them from punishment this is a great remedy for eight cows you know the story of king shivi and the pigeon so the pigeon indra in the form of eagle was hunting agni in the form of a pigeon king shivi was doing a penance and this pigeon falls on his lap so and this pigeon is into a very bad condition bleeding and all of this so king shivi protects him wants to protect him indra in the form of eagle comes to king shivi and say king shivi you are holding my food 
रिलीज माई फूड सो दैट आई कैन हीट इट सो किंग शिबी टेल्स दैट नो ही हैव कम अंडर माई प्रोटेक्शन आई विल प्रोटेक्ट हिम सो ईगल सेज दैट ईगल इंद्रा इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ईगल सेज शिबी बिकॉज ऑफ यू आई विल बी हंग्री आई आई हैव टू स्लीप हंग्री यू हैव टेकन माई राइट फुल फूड so you have to compensate for it it is my dharma so king sibi says okay i will not give you this pigeon whatever meat you want to eat equal to the weight of this pigeon i will give you from my own body so they take a scale taraju keep the pigeon on one side of the scale and another side of scale king sibi starts cutting his body parts and keep on putting on that scale surprisingly the pigeon is very heavy king shibi keeps all of his hands thighs um, almost complete all of the muscles all of the flesh that he can take out of his skin he take takes out of he can take out of his body he takes out with help of a sword keeps it on the scale but still the pigeon is heavier so king shibi himself sits on the scale that i will sacrifice my complete body to save this pigeon at this point of time indra and agni come in their real form bless shibi and take him to the heavens this transformation from this world to another world is indicated by the eighth house parashar explicitly mentions that eighth house is the house of past life karma and future life karma so you came from heaven you will go back to heaven and that is indicated by the eighth house and so is the act of mercy so being merciful saving someone by donating something that is precious to you giving someone food by sacrificing your food this sacrifice this act of mercy is the greatest remedy that you can do for scorpio the greatest remedy that you can do for eight house once you keep on doing this not only the eight house and scorpio becomes good but there is an internal change that happens in you that change is the lesson that either you can learn by going through that karma which the 8000 scorpio is going to teach you or that karma you can get through this repentance that karma you can get through this penance and then you don't have to that, that lesson you can get get through this penance this is spiritual sacrifice that we are doing and in that case when you get this knowledge by this penance by this austerity you don't have to go through that karma which will eventually teach you the same lesson so it is like surrendering to the god that i have learned my lesson so either forgive me or even if going through the karma is inevitable let me go through it but because i already have the understanding i have already understood the lesson of the karma the going will not be as difficult as it was before so the bad event may happen but the impact that it will have on you will be all together different this is the spiritual awakening that every human should have this is the uh, this is the spiritual awakening that is the spiritual spirit which you should be going for which you should be which you should be achieving which you should wish to achieve because you have get this precious human birth is what all the sages and saints of past have told us that because we have got this human life human body the best to use it to go for higher knowledge go for spirituality lessons of karma and this is that essence of spirituality that you will get through this siddh vidyas so by your devotion to this siddh vidyas your spiritual progress will be better you will be one step closer to becoming that super soul that you really are and not only this she is kubjika is identified with sacrificial fire in which everything have to enter so you know many a times you see people doing fire sacrifice yagya generally in temples or a uh, generally people in temple priests etc organize a havan homa fire sacrifice for general welfare or for the temple or for itself in that homa if you can donate something from your side clarified butter or anything as such which is to be used in that homa if you provide that then this is also a very great remedy for scorpio and the eighth house 
providing resources to those things which are to be done by another other people providing resources to those things which are going to benefit others is a great remedy for scorpio and the 8th house and kubhjika is also taken as shavari that is tribal goddess so if you ever happen to visit a tribal area or if a tribal area is nearby visit that and try to find out the prime god or goddess that this tribe worship and by going to the temple of that prime god or goddesses which these tribes worship anyone that lives around you showing devotion to that tribal goddess offering something to that tribal god or goddess pleases kubhjika in turn rectifies and purifies your 8th house and scorpio also kubhjika is named as khageshi that means goddess in the form of a bird so freeing birds freeing birds from cage freeing birds from pigeon taking any injured bird to hospital taking care of them is also a great remedy for 8th house and scorpio and when you do this when you do these remedies positive results of planet in the 8th house positive results of planet in scorpio positive result of the house where scorpio is placed you feel in your life for sure when you feel it these remedies any remedy have to be done for one year so you will do the remedy for the first time you will start getting the effect and once you do these remedies continuously for one year doing all of these remedies continuously for one year like visiting the tribal goddess once in visiting a tribal goddess you can do once in a year freeing the birds you can do twice in a year the act of donation for someone's benefit you can do every time you get a chance and once you have spent one year doing all these things the complete good result of the remedy you start receiving lastly kubhjika also is a name for girl under 8 years of age so basically girls of all ages from 1 year of age to all the 16 17 years of ages are referred by different names kubhjika is a name for an 8 year old lady young lady unmarried so this kumari bhoj you know in navratri what we do is we invite young female children who are not menstruating to take food we consider them as a form of goddess durga so this kumari worship is another great remedy for 8th house and scorpio and not only this if you cannot do kumari worship because of any reason then make sure that whenever you find a young female child you give her something to eat some biscuits some toffee some candy will be fine but whenever you see a young girl never ever leave her without giving her anything this is one of the best and most transformative remedy for 8000 scorpio right thought of sharing it for you for the benefit of those who watch my channel and ascribe to my views thank you for watching the video